in our eyes. We thank you for this word. We thank you, excellent God. We thank you, excellent God. 
We thank you, excellent God. We thank you, excellent God. We thank you for the thing that you are doing. Thank you for showing yourself strong unto us. Thank you for this word on today. Thank you, Father, for turning our hearts toward you. In the name of Jesus, thank you for turning our hearts toward you. Thank you for showing us a more excellent way. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for Shirley Kennedy. Thank you for all those that are following and watching us even right now. We thank you for them. Thank you for their life. Thank you for their health. Thank you for their strength. Thank you for them, Holy Father. In the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. We thank God, amen, for this opportune moment that the Lord have allowed us to be here. Yes, God, we thank you. Blessings to you, Pastor Cooper. Blessings to you, all of you, women of men and women of God. Jennifer Harris, God bless you to you. God bless you, Lifeline. God bless you, Mother Williams. God bless you. God bless you, Minister Hodge. God bless you. God bless everyone that is on the line. God bless everyone that's listening in. In the name of Jesus. Today we're looking at, for our lesson today, we want to look at our topic. When the servant who have no reputation is more than a servant. When the servant who have no reputation is more than a servant. Philippians 2, 1 through 15 is what we're looking at today. And when we have a subtitle for this, uh, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Yeah, we want to look at this. Father, give us understanding, give us wisdom. Your word declares that you give his wisdom to men of understanding. You give his wisdom to men of understanding. God bless him to you. Uh, uh, woman of God, Jennifer Harris, amen. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Philippians 2, 1 through 15. Uh, we, we've taken our topic, when the servant who have no reputation is more than a servant. We expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. Our subtopic, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. We have a, as a running, as a running title, he's more than a man and a servant. He's more than a man and a servant. He's more than a man and a servant. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, there be any encouragement in Christ, if there be any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in Christ, any, yeah, uh, uh, and that consolation, consolation, what are you referring to when you say consolation? Normally consolation, the comfort uh, received by a person at the loss of disappointment, that was consolation in knowing uh -huh, that, um, uh, that uh, well, I don't want to give dude a sentence, but yeah, the comfort received by a person after a loss or disappointment. So it is in the same family as comfort, solace, sympathy, compassion, piety. Uh huh. Yeah, relief, help, aid, support, cheer, encouragement, reassurance, fortification, soothing, easement, secure. Yes, yes, yes. So. That consolation comes from that place, come from that family. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, if any consolation in Christ, 
if any comfort of love, if any uh, fellowship of the spirit, if any bow of, uh, of mercy, Paul said, fulfill ye my joy, fulfill ye my joy, fulfill ye my joy, complete my joy, complete my joy in this, fulfill my joy, complete my joy, that ye be like-minded, don't cause me to worry, fulfill my joy, complete my joy, that ye be like-minded, that you be like-minded, like-minded, that you too are looking for that consolation in Christ, the comfort of love, fellowship in the spirit, bowels and mercy. Uh -huh. Fulfill ye my joy, complete my love, uh, complete my joy, complete it. Don't leave my joy uh -huh. a, a, a third full, a, a, a three quarter full. No, complete my joy, fulfill my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind, being of one accord of one mind, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife. Let nothing, nothing, no matter how angry you get, no matter how uh, uh, tired you are, no matter you, you because you feel like throwing in the towel, because you got upset because somebody ate the last piece of the ice cream. You got upset because somebody told you to go home early you got upset because somebody told you to get up early and get up early and go to work. You got upset. Let nothing, nothing. You thought it all had to be about church stuff. You thought it all had to be about uh, uh, going to Bible study, going to church, reading your Bible. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Strife or vain glory. Uh huh. There's that word vainglory. What is vainglory? What is vainglory? Inordinate pride. Inordinate pride. That's what it is. It's called inordinate pride in oneself or one's achievement. You got you got inordinate pride in oneself. You got inordinate pride in one's achievements. You got inordinate pride in, in, in what you've built and what you've done. Excessive vanity. Yeah, yeah, excessive vanity. Your excessive vainglory is going to put your salvation at risk. Your excessive vainglory, your vainglory, is about to put your life at risk. But you're not seeing that because you're thinking that you're justified because you have some achievement. You're justified because you've been doing things according to a norm. You've been doing things according to a fashion. You've been doing things according to a, a, a tradition. You've been doing things according to a habit. And you think that's the way it should be. But you've been wrong. Mama been wrong. Daddy been wrong. Sister been wrong. Brother been wrong. Auntie been wrong. And you came up doing it wrong. But you feel justified in that because everybody that taught you did it wrong. And you're boasting and you're prideful. And can't get a word in edge wise. Want to be like your mama, want to be like your daddy, but they were wrong. And you want to walk right in their footsteps. Don't want to listen to truth. Don't want to listen to what is going to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my pastor told me he was talking to everybody in the church, but I took it personal. That's just how bad I wanted the word. I took it personal. My, so I, I, that's why I said my pastor told me he was talking to everybody, but I took it personal. My pastor told me that uh, when he was living, God bless him. He said, the same way you treat your pastor, somebody's going to treat you that way. The same way you treat your parents, trust me, listen. The same way you treat your parents, your children are going to treat you that same way. We don't want to hear that. The same way you treat your parents, your mother and father, uh huh. the same way your, your children are going to treat you that same way. You got one child and you became a lover of your mother, but just disrespectful towards your father. 
don't 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 say nothing. But you better start praying now that your child not schizophrenic because they want to have the attitude of your mother uh -huh, and the disposition of your father. One moment they're like Mr. Jekyll, the next moment like their sister Hyde. And, and, and you need to pray now so that they don't come out that way. You need to pray now that Lord forgive me, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up. And I don't need to be coming out like that. I, I don't need my sons and my daughters coming out like that. One moment they're good, next moment they're cold. One moment look like they're in a mood swing, next moment look like they're having hot flashes, and I don't know what's going on. And we don't need all of that. Oftentimes we wonder where it comes from because of how we've treated others in our past while we're trying to go up the ladder. We treat people wrong. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, like-minded. Having the same love, we operate with the same love. Just like you there in Mississippi, Jennifer Harris, that's why I should be operating in the same love. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love. Doesn't matter where the next man is. Doesn't matter where the next uh, 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 fellow brother, fellow sister is located. That we should be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, in one mind. Paul is on a missionary journey. Paul is making a circuit. Paul is going around. We talked about Ephesians. We talked about Corinthians. Now he's the Philippians. He's making his rounds. And then he said, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. If you go back and look at that one mind and that one accord, you'll find out that it's not just spoken only to the Philippians church. But everywhere Paul is going, he wants them to be of the same mind, same love, one accord. Men, women, boys and girls everywhere who've come into this gospel, fulfill ye my joy, be like-minded, having the same love of one accord, one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Vain glory. Vain, it's vain. It's vain, baby. It's vain. It's vain. It's vain. Let nothing be done through strife. Strife. You know what strife is, right? You know what strife is. But let nothing be done through strife. Just angry. Just bitter. Always disagreeing. Looking for a disagreement. You just can't even rest until you find a disagreement. You can't even rest until you find something not working right. You just you just got to find something out of order. You just got to find something out of order. You're looking for something out of order. You just, you're just hunting it. You're sniffing it out like a little bloodhound. You got to find something out of order. Angry, bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Conflict, strife within the community, ethnics and civil strife, and yeah, all, all kind of little frictions and discord and disagreement and, di and, and dissensions and variance and disputes and arguments and quarrelings and wranglings and bickering and controversy and contentions and disharmony, and it brings hostility and animosity, brings some falling out. It brings some bad blood, ill feelings, bad feelings. And then people, you know, when, when they withdraw themselves from you, you feel as if you're the bad wolf. You, you, you're the bad uh, sheep. You, you feel like you're just all alone and don't have nobody. Why are they leaving? Because you're always carrying bad blood. Why are they leaving? You're always trying to start some strife. Why are they leaving? You're always trying to start some... Uh, 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 the simulation, disagreement, looking for something to argue about. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. There it is, of lowliness of mind. I know you really want to elevate your mind all out there as if you're the big kahuna. You want to elevate your mind all out there as if you are the muck of the muck, the mac daddy, the mac mama. That nothing, no, nothing move without you. You have the last say so. And, and we get the scripture mixed up when we said that you are the head and not the tail. You're the first and not the last. You're above and not beneath. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get that mixed up. We get that mixed up. But that's a, a blessed posture. When you walk in that blessed posture, that's one thing. But to maintain that blessed posture, to maintain that right there, right there, right there, you've got to come to a lowliness of mind. If you want to maintain that For those who are high minded and puffed up And boasted in the fact that they were the head and not the tail They were above and not beneath They were a lender and not the borrower They were the first and not the last They were all of these things And they were lifted up in their pride It wasn't long, they didn't stay there They didn't stay there But if you want to stay there You want to have longevity in that posture You want to have longevity in that office Do so with lowliness of mind. Condescend your attitude. Condescend your, your, your personality to the place where you're not doing what you're doing in strife. You're not doing what you're doing trying to pick a disagreements and fights and arguments and all those things. No, 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 no. You can get ahead, but you don't always have to get ahead with a big head. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> you don't always have to get ahead with a big head. With a, a exploded head, you don't always have to get ahead with 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 with, with the ego head. Yeah, you you can get ahead. It's okay to get ahead, but why get ahead with the exploded head? Uh, you you don't have to do that. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem, let each, let each, let each one esteem others better than themselves. In other words, you have the lowliness of mind. Let the brother, let the sister, let somebody else begin to lift you up, exhort you. Let them talk about you. Let them give praise to you. Let them exhort you. You don't exhort yourself. I know I got that flag. I, I got that swagger. I got that thing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got that Jesus swagger. I got that. Je you got that Jesus swagger. I got that Jesus swagger. I got that Jesus swagger. You got that Jesus swagger. You got that Jesus swagger. Everybody got that Jesus swagger. Clap your hand. Clap your hand. Everybody got that Jesus swagger. Clap your. Come on now, really? You ain't got to do all that. You, you really don't have to do all that. You really don't. Just keep it real. And have a lowliness of mind. Let each other esteem others better than themselves. Let the other man, let the other woman, let the other sister, let the other brother exhort them. Let, 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 let them uh, uh, speak good about you. You don't have to speak good about yourself. You don't have to put a big old billboard on your back, uh, a big old sign on your back that says, I'm a wonder. <laughs> People are gonna say you are <laughs> you are what? You wonder they they gonna look at you and wonder, and then after a while they ain't gonna look at you and wonder. They just look at you. They won't even wonder anymore. Don't do that. But let others esteem you. Don't esteem yourself to that point. I know. I know. I know. It's the carnal side of you that wants that. It's the carnal side of you that wants to lift you up, to want to exalt you, to want to explode your head. It's the carnal side of you that want, uh -huh, that, that love, uh, that glory and gratification. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every one, um, look not every man on his own thing. There it is. Look not every man on his own thing. You ain't got to look around and see what you got. You don't have to boast about what you got, where you've been. You ain't got to do all that. No, no, no. Leave that. Leave that. Don't you touch that. Look not every man on his own things. Yeah, I got houses. I got fishes. I got Cadillac. I got cars. I got I got yams. I got I got grams. I got grams. I got <laughs> all these other things. No, 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 no. Don't, don't don't you worry about that. Forget what that all that stuff you got. You got it. That's good. Keep it. Learn how to keep it because the more you start talking about it, you're gonna lose it. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Look for ways that you can advance others. Find ways that you can advance Shirley Kennedy, Deborah Cooper, Jennifer Harris. Find ways that you can advance Stephen Hanks. 
find ways that you can advance Yvonne Robinson and, and uh, Felina Hodge and find ways that you can advance uh, 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 Alfreda Williams. Find ways that you can advance uh, those others that are on the line and just looking and just listening, hearing. And find ways to advance them. Find ways to, 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 to exhort the Christ in them. Find ways to advance uh, uh, Ursula. Ursula Breland. Find ways to speak highly of Bridget Harris. Find ways. Find ways. Find ways. Look for ways. Look for ways to speak about uh, 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 Margaret Temple Brown. Find ways to speak about her. Did y'all hear what's going on in Mississippi? What? Mississippi? What's happened with Mississippi? What's happened with Mississippi? You know, you know there's a family down there called the Browns. What you say? What they doing? Man, they starting to work in Mississippi. What you say? A work, a great work in Mississippi. That's right. It has been said of them and they believe it. They bought into what had been spoken. It's a prophetic word over them that they're going to do a great work and they're going to do a great work. They're not going to come off. And they have that mindset that, that we're on the wall. We are building and we can't come down. We can't come off the wall. What? Who are they? They're the Browns. Where they live? Down there in, in Gulfport, somewhere up in that place. What you say? They working in Mississippi? Yeah, they working in Mississippi. When people thought that Mississippi was just going, it just, just a, it, it was a cursed place. And they said that nothing good is going to come out of it. And, 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 and they talked about the people that got lynched down there. They talked about the people who was enslaved, enslaved and just, it's just a bunch of, it's just a bunch of poverty stricken people and people who look like they're just the last of the Mohegans of America. But there are some people who are down in Mississippi about to change all of that because they walk in the glory of God. And what you say? They got a prayer line. They come on the line and they are teaching the word of God and they're talking about the Lord and, they, and they're going to go down there and, and, and not only in Gulfport, but they're going to swing through Wiggins. What you Wiggins? They're going to swing through Wiggins. They're going to collaborate with uh, uh, the woman of God, Jennifer Harris and Bridget Harris down there in Wiggins. And they're going to turn Wiggins out and Wiggins going to do some things and they're going to run and they're going to grab hold to uh, 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 they're going to grab hold to uh, 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 the woman of God uh, uh, Shirley Kennedy they're going to run through there and they got a load of people that they've just been wanting to connect with what you say they are praying folk they are Bible study folk hand of the Lord is upon them what you say where they at again all up and down Wigan, all up and down Gulfport, and and and, and down there, and, and Christians, <laughs> past Christian, <laughs> and all up and down past this, past Christian. No, say it ain't so. It is so. God is doing a mighty work. My God, what you say? Listen, listen, listen. You may think that it's not a revival right now, and the water is just being troubled. But God about to break out that wildfire. In other words, people of God, all the words, all I'm trying to let you know, all I'm trying to let you know, look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Find out what they're doing. Find out the greatness that they're walking in. Find out what uh, episode they're about to take place there. Find out how the hand of the Lord is upon them. Find out how God about to shift them to another level. Find out what's happening over there in Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> uh, find out what's happening in Augusta, Georgia. Find out what that woman of God, Pastor Deborah Cooper, is doing over there. And, and Evangelist Brown, uh, Evangelist uh, 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 Woods are doing. Find out what they're doing over there. What you say? You say Augusta, Augusta. Augusta, Augusta. Find out what they're doing over there. They're about to turn Augusta upside down. Because it doesn't really take a whole lot 
They used to sing the song, faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. You don't have to have a whole lot of faith. Just use the little bit you got. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. And that little bit of faith is about to call people to be saved. That little bit of faith is about to turn the tide around. That little bit of faith is going to turn the table. Because when you bless the master, when you fed him when he was naked, Closed them when you clothed them when he was naked, fed him when he was hungry, when you when you when you when you, when you, when you saw, uh, 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 anointed his head with oil when his head was hurting, when you put sandals on his feet, when you went all out, gave him a meal, gave him a place to lay his head, when you did all of that for the master. He's about to do some things for you. But when did we see when did we see you master out and, and, and we didn't have food and didn't have clothes and didn't have shoes? And, and, and when did we see these things happen? And, and we did these to you when you've done it to the least of my little ones, you've done them to me. <laughs> oh Jesus. When you've done them to the least of my little ones, when you sowed into their life, you sown into mine. When you bless them. You bless me. When you spoke highly of them, you spoke highly of me. And when you put them down, you put me down. When you stress them out, you stress me out. When you hindered their progress, you've hindered my progress. And that you tell you, stop. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Look on the things of others. See how you can advance them. See how you can bless them. Look for ways that you can bless them. You don't always have to bless them with money. Money is good. Don't look. Money answers all things. There it is. There it is. You don't have to, you don't have to always bless them with money. <laughs> the, the, the man of God says. Uh huh. The man, this was the man of God. Let me tell you what the man of God said. The man of God said, "Look, look, uh, look in the house. See what is lacking. There's got to be something in the house. Ask the woman of God, what is there that we can do for you? Do I need to speak to the king for you? Do I need to do this for you? No, I don't need you to speak for me. Is what the woman of God said." Well, all right, all right. Then look and see what is missing in the house. We may, we got to do something. We got to find a way to bless them. I need to bless these people. They done built a house on the house. They done built a room on the house and given me a place to stay. And I need to find a way to bless them. I want to bless them. And just whack, like the man of God opened his mouth and said, I want to bless them. That thing was already duly noted in the kingdom of heaven. I want to bless them. I want to bless them. They've been kind to me. Father, I know I'm your servant, but these people have been kind to me. They show me nothing but kindness. I want to bless them. How do I bless them? Silver and gold have a number such as I have, I give to thee. How do I bless them? I know what I do. Gehazi! Gehazer, come here, Gehazer. Yes, my lord. Have the woman of God to stand in the door. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Stand in the door, woman of God. I, I'm in the I'm in the door. I'm in the door. I'm in the door. By this time, <laughs> according to the time of life, uh-huh, childbearing. By this time, next year, uh-huh. Well, that, that, that would be childbearing season, right there, childbearing season, nine months. Uh-huh. That's what you're going to do. I don't, because Gehazi said, I don't hear no little pity pats. I don't hear no little feet. I don't hear nobody calling Momo and Papa. All right, we, we got what we want. We, we know how to bless them now. We know what to do. We know exactly what to do. I know how to bless you. Sometimes uh, uh, the Lord just want, uh, he just want to bless his people. And he'll send a servant your way. He'll send a man or woman of God your way. He'll, he he go, listen, 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 listen. 
I know everybody want these out of out of uh, out of uh, some. Everybody want these spiritual encounters. Everybody want these out of uh, out of this earth encounters. But God's about to give you some encounters that you didn't know men that you can encounter men in a certain way that they carry another. They walk in another dimension. Ha 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 ha! Thank you, Lord. They walk in a whole nother realm. God will send men your way, Jennifer Harris, Margaret Temple Brown, Pastor Deborah Cooper, Nicole Bowden. God will send men your way. And you think that they ain't all of that. Let me look at my title. Because I said you'll think they're not all of that. Subtitle said, Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself uh huh. And became servant unto death. Not that's not the title I want. Let us go back to our overall title. When the servant who have no reputation is more than a servant. Ah, that one right there. That one is about to speak to you. When the servant who have no reputation is more than a servant. Be careful for those people who you walk around. You've been needing advance. You've been needing uh, 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 an advantage. You've been needing a lifting. You've been needing a shifting. But how can you get a shifting, a lifting, an advancing, a, 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 another level when you've been criticizing everybody, when you've been bamboozling hurt everybody, you've been walking in vain glory, you've been doing the opposite of what God has called you to do. But the moment you stop and appreciate the moment, and begin to appreciate people that God sends your way. Appreciate the people that came into your life. They may look raggedy, tattered, and torn. Begin to appreciate the people that have come your way. You didn't even know God sent them. You didn't know God sent that barefoot man. You didn't know God sent that wig hanging off her head woman. You didn't know, you didn't know, you didn't know God sent that woman to you with a bad weave day. You, you didn't know it. You didn't know it. You thought that that person, person was broken, busted, and disgusted. You just thought they were down on their last. You didn't know it. A prophetess in the sky who could not fix a weave came to you. That's right. It is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, the overseer say, Jesus. That's right. Jesus. The prophetess came to you with a bad, have a bad weave day. But you say, come here, come here, come here, come here. You know what? Come here. I, I want to, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. You got a moment? I want to bless you. Let me help you out. Here, put this, go in and bathe and put this on. You don't know their story. You don't have to know their story. You don't have to know where they come from, what they were doing. Now, give them some water. Let them bathe. Put some shoes on their feet. Put some stockings on. Put whatever you got to put on. Put it on them. Let, let, you know what? Give me that weave. It's, uh, it's all matted up anyway. Take this one. Let me, let, let me pin it up for you. Got the little prophet is looking good now. And, and, and let me fix you some uh, let me fix you some chicken and some venison uh huh and, and then I'm fix a nice meal for them yeah and they're not walking in reputation the woman of God is not walking in reputation I'm just using a woman of God and that could be a man of God but they're not walking in reputation they, they're not flaunting their degree they're not flaunting that they've been in the presence of the Lord they're not flaunting anything they just came from the brook that just dried up. <laughs> Don't hear me. They just came from the brook. They just dried up, Margaret. They just came from the brook. The brook dried up. Their lips are parched. And they came to your house. And you were struggling too. Just fix me something to eat. And, and, and I know your disposition might just cause you to stay right where you are for a whole nother season the negativeness might cause you to stay right there where you are for a whole nother season another 20 year season you might get passed over if your seasonal shift comes in 7 years 14 years 21 years whatever 28 years in Moses case 40 years if your shift come in those seasons 
and you just bypassed one that has the key, a key that could shift you into another dimension, but because you were looking on the outer appearance, you just missed that shift. You just missed the shift. But how did I miss that shift, Lord? How did I miss that shift? When you have done it to the least of my little ones, you've done it to me. When you've rejected them, you rejected me. But how did I know they were your little ones? Because number one, it is in your nature now, your godly nature now to be kind. It is in your godly nature now to be uh, 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 pure and holy and righteous and wanting to help and wanting to do good. It is in your godly nature now to do that. You're no longer in your sin nature. So it behooves us to want to show kindness to people. Be careful how you entertain strangers. Doesn't matter how they look. Be careful how you're entertaining strangers because they might just be angels unaware on assignment. You don't help fix the weave. You don't help fix them up, gave them something to eat. And after that, you get ready to send them on their way. And they say, come here, dear. Come here. Because of what you have just done for me, you will never go broke another day in your life. They don't have to say, thus if the Lord this, thus if the Lord that. They don't have to say all of that. When you walk in a certain place in God, you don't have to say, thus if the Lord. They've been looking for somebody to bless. And then they just bless you. You'll never go broke another day in your life. You shall always walk in wealth. That's my, that might just be all they say. You will always walk in wealth. You didn't realize there were a grace carriers. You didn't realize there were favor carriers. You didn't realize they were glory carriers. You didn't realize how they got there to that place of humility. You didn't realize how they got to that place of being in a lowliness of mind type status. You went and you helped them. And they said, you'll never see. You'll never, never see. You'll never see barrenness again. You'll never see bondage again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, 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 you will never go broke again. I know they like it when we speak that type of stuff on them. But you will always walk in success. Success doesn't always have to do with money. How about wealth? How about how about health success? Success of your health. Success of your wealth. Success of your mind. Success being successful enough to, 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 to advance not only in the kingdom of heaven, but in the realm on the earth, in the earth realm. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others higher, better than themselves. That's right. Let, 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 let it happen. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind, there it is, there it is, there it is right there. Let this mind, Bridget, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That mind, that mind that was in Christ Jesus, let it be in you. Let it be in you. Let that mind be in you. Let that mind be in you. Stop trying to look at everybody as if they're trying to get over on you. Stop trying to look at everybody as he's going to try to steal you and take what you try to, you want to bless him. And oh, he's just going to go buy weed. He's just a crackhead. He, he just this. He just that. Forget about all of that. So what? Put an assignment on it. Father, I don't know what they're going to do with this money. All I know is they came and asked me for some money. I don't know what they're going to do with it. But this might just be the one blessing that they need that's going to shift them to another level. So, Father, today I sow this seed. I sow this $20, this $50, this $100. I sow this into their life. I sow this into their future. 
into their future. I sow it into their life. I sow it into their success. I sow it into their salvation. I sow it into their turnaround. Father, as I give this, so shall they turn around. As I give this, so open another door, God, of salvation for them. As I sow this into that, I don't know where they come from. I don't know their habits. I don't know how greedy they are for drugs. I don't know. But one thing I know, they've come to your servant and they've asked for help. I see them side the road begging. This beggar will never beg again. There you go. You can change that begging with your faith. If you put your faith into motion and you see them begging, you can whisper this prayer to the Lord. You can speak it to them. You can reach off while you're driving. Come over to the place. You, they, they didn't know that you put an assignment on that $20. And then you roll down your window. They come running up to you because they're beggars. And then you don't, matter of fact, you don't, you don't put the little, you, you don't put the uh, $20 in a little envelope. You just, you were looking for them. You were looking for them. You were looking for those beggars. And you don't put the $20 in a, in an envelope. And then on the back of the, on the little sign on the back of it, you shall never beg again. And then a, a, a sign on the inside, a little card, you shall never beg again. From this day forward, from this day forward, I call the spirit of the living God down upon you to change your story in the name of Jesus that would be the last $20 it won't be the last but that would be the one $20 that might just get them out of that trouble that they've been into you done, you, you, you done gave it to them you done roll up your window you gone about your business oh bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord I bless the Lord I bless the Lord I bless you Lord I bless you Lord I bless you Lord and that $20 working they were struggling and there they are reading that note what you said and they can't even hold back the tears and all of a sudden, they start packing up their bags, packing up whatever they have, getting off the street, because now they're convicted, because they met the right one. Somebody who didn't judge them. Somebody who wasn't trying to put them down or just whatever. But they put an assignment on the gift. They put an assignment, a faith assignment on the gift. And they begin to speak. Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where are those beggars? Take me down in Biggerville. I'm trying to find some beggars. Take me down to Biggerville. I want to go to Biggerville. Is that is, is Biggerville right next door to Wiggins? Is it right next door to 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 Gulfport? I'm trying to find Beggersville. I want to go down there to Skid Row in Beggersville, where all the beggars hang out camping out and then and, and put everything on assignment put some notes up in that thing <laughs> God get ready to shift you God get ready to shift you you can't if you can't handle the shifting if you can't handle if you can't handle this then, then just return it just return it if you if you if you can't handle what's about to happen to you just return the gift just return the gift we understand just return the gift because with this gift right here comes an assignment this gift I know I kept going but this gift there's an assignment come with this one I'm not even gonna tell you what to do because what I have assigned it to do it will not fail <laughs> Jesus. Ah, there it is. Look, 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 look. Uh huh. Let not let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know what he did when he held when he held out where he was right where he was at. And then when he did come to Lazarus, he said, "Father, I know you hear me. You hear me every time I call. But for the, I said this for the sake of these that are here, so that they will hear and know, and they will believe you." 
And that's why I'm calling Lazarus. And he called Lazarus out loud because he wanted everybody to believe and, and hear. And then when Lazarus came forth, jumping and hopping, he said, Luke, let him go free. And what was the end result? The people start believing. I know you want some people to start believing. So first of all, you may have to do something that you've never done before. You may have to step out of your little quiet box, step out of your little fearful box, step out of that little box that you've been trying to hide in. And you may have to do something that's going to put you on the spot. Jesus opened his mouth and said, Father, I thank you. And I know that you hear me because you hear me every time I call. And, 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 and for the sake of these, I'm saying this, that they might believe. Lazarus, come forth. People listening. And they start moving something. They said, what the world? Something moving over there. <laughs> Lazarus came hopping out. Loose him. And let him go. And the people start believing. Something is about to happen in your life that you're about to cause people to believe Christ. You're about to call some people to believe in Christ again and their life is about to change. Stephen Hanks, I see you, man, the God. The people about to, their lives about to change because you're about to step out of your comfort zone. You're about to step out of your little, your little, your little, your little, your little place of being pacified. You're about to step out into, into some uncharted waters and you're about to decrease some things and it's going to manifest. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, who being in, he is the form, he is the form of God, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. God didn't stop him. But check this out but made himself of no reputation. I'm not a truck driver. I'm not, I'm not even a carpenter. And, and, and he would not even take on that title of being a carpenter. They called him, it's not just the carpenter's son. Ask him what was his reputation. He, he didn't have a reputation. He wasn't trying to build a reputation, but a teacher. He was here to do his father's work, not his earthly father. His father's work. Joseph wasn't even his earthly father, but according to the term, uh, a stepdaddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, step. He wasn't his biological, but made himself of no reputation. Took upon him the form of a servant. That's what he wanted. He said, listen, I don't want a reputation. I don't want one who has all these degrees. I don't need that with somebody who know how to do all this other stuff. I don't want that. I know what I want. I'm going to accept the form of a servant. I'm going to go forth as a servant, Father. And when I go as a servant, because there are some dogs that are servants, there are some cats that are servants, seeing our dogs and some, and, and some cats and some other things that are servants, fetching water out of the refrigerator. Oh, Lord have mercy. Remember, somebody had a little pet pig, a little servant, had a little pig going to the refrigerator getting things, bringing it to him. Because they were too lazy to do so. They were just happy to look, look at what I taught my little pig to do. But in this case, took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. See, that's a whole nother ram. You wasn't ready for that ram, was you? You wasn't ready for that ram. Took upon him no reputation uh, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Form of a servant in the likeness of man. Likeness of man. In other words, he's not man. He told you that he's not a man that he should lie, but he's not a man. He's not a man. And he's definitely not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. Made him in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. Check this out. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
even the death of the cross. Obedient. Didn't try to run from death. Came obedient unto it. That I'm going to go the way as men go. And I told you all the other day. I told you, I told you, I told you the other day. That when they start looking at the men. And the Bible speaks of men. The Bible speaks of men. The Bible is for mature Christians. Mature Christians. The, 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 the little adolescent Christians, they're not going to get it. The little baby Christians, they're not going to get it. You have to teach them. But for those robust adult Christians is what this is for. Because in that, you're going to find the Bible talks about men. I told you this the other day. Men, men, brethren. And the sister may say, but what about the sisters? What about us? What place do we walk in? What about us? Don't we have a place? Why y'all just ridding us? Y'all just, the Bible so male chauvinist. <laughs> the Bible is so male chauvinist. The Bible doesn't recognize us women folk. We want our rights too. And these are the things that happens in the earth realm. That doesn't happen in the realm of the spirit. That doesn't happen in the presence of the almighty God in the realm of the spirit. He have to tolerate that on the earth realm. They want their rights. But what they fail to realize, they've been reading it from the letter of the word, but not from the spirit of the word. Because the spirit of the word will tell you, hold up. You're not excommunicated from this gospel. Hold up, sisters. You're not excommunicated from the word of God. No, you're all up in here, up in here, up in here. You're all up in here. Because the last time I heard, God's looking for some that are married. Tell you how to do this thing. When a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, they're no longer two, but they become one. But I'm still sister. Maybe you're one. And that means that you should do what Paul said. Uh huh. That you should be the same mind. You should be of the same mind. Same love. One accord. Like mindedness. Your, your, my, 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 my joy should be filled. Not half filled. Complete my joy. Hey God, thank you, Father. And when you look at it, what does it say? Uh huh. See what happens that man, that son, that son speaks of maturity. The Lord know who you are, but the Lord know that He know who you are, who He designed you to be. Rather, He designed you to be a spirit being. The Lord designed you, Adam, and you, Eve, to be a spirit being. And because your little misbehaving self ate of the fruit that was forbidden, now you're looking at it through different eyes now. And now you're trying to mess things up. But the Lord is not changing. He still sees you as sons. But you say, but I'm woe man. He still sees you as a son because son speaks of maturity. Does it speaks of gender? It does it speaks of uh, uh, who's stronger than the other, who's weaker than the other? It speaks of maturity. This is where you graduate from milk and get on some meat. Because sisters, you're all up in here. You're all up in here. You're all, all up in here. <laughs> this gospel is for you. And don't be ashamed to be called sons of God. That's a matured place. If you can handle some maturity, don't be ashamed to be called sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is, and every man that has this hope in him. What? Every man that has this hope in him. And not know every man and woman <laughs> not know every man and woman but every man that has this hope in him 
purifies himself even as he is pure. And if you don't get that memo, if you don't get the memo, you're going to start trying to include them, men and women, men and women. See, see, there you are, brothers and sisters. But no, don't, don't do that. Because the Bible's not leading you out. It's including you. Because he did not design you to be solo, a, a solo entity. He didn't design you to be a solo entity. He wants you to be a part of his plans. In order for you to be a part of his plan, to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, you got to be married to do that. You don't want to hear me now. You don't want to hear me now. You don't want to hear me now. Because you want to follow God's plan. And if you're doing it, if you're doing the do, and you're not married, you're not generating into his plan. You're generating into your plan. Not the Lord's plan. The Lord said, "Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth." I want you to do it my way. You do it some other way. You bastards. And they don't like that. I know they don't like that term. They don't like that term. They don't like that term because they're not married, and then they have a child out of wedlock, and the child being called a bastard. They don't like that. But the mama and the daddy did not protect them from that. You got to protect the womb. Got to protect it. Got to protect it. Oh, Jesus. All right, <laughs> let's go. My time is almost up, but I know they don't, they don't want it. They don't want this. Let, let, let me give it to you anyway, though. Uh huh. No reputation took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, that's how he came, as a man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, until even unto the death of the cross. Wherefore, wherefore, check this out, after all of that, it did not say, verse 9, verse 9, you move and, and, start, and you start off up, 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 up to verse number 1. It didn't do that. Verse 9 is right where it's at. After all of this, after no reputation, after being called a servant, after humbling himself, after being obedient unto death, and after all of that, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. After the fact, God highly exalted him. Not before the fact. And while people thinking that uh, that they, they, they're in this until the, for the long haul, long haul, long haul, and they re they don't realize that you got to be vetted, baby, and the vetted requires you to go through some things. Would you think you're gonna get this Holy Ghost and not be vetted? Maybe you got to be vetted to have this Holy Ghost. You got to be vetted to go further in Him. Everybody want to preach on the Holy Ghost and teach on the Holy Ghost and don't even know the purpose of the Holy Ghost. But if you're going to have the Holy Ghost, you've been vetted to do His will. You've been vetted to preach, to teach, to soul win. You've been vetted to change lives. The Old Testament tells us that the, that the Holy Ghost is a working gift. And the Holy Ghost did not come upon everybody in the Old Testament, but the man who was charged to do a work uh, for the tabernacle, the Holy Ghost came upon him. The Holy Ghost came upon a few people in the Old Testament to do a specific work. You think the Holy Ghost has changed its purpose? The Holy Ghost have not changed its purpose. The Spirit of God have not changed its purpose. His purpose is still the same because God doesn't change like that. His purpose is still the same. It's a working gift. He's not giving this gift to people who don't work. He's not giving this gift to lazy people. No. He's not going to give you this rope so you can hang yourself. This is a gift of accountability. The Holy Ghost, if you've never heard it before, hear it now. The Holy Ghost is a gift of accountability. It's like the one who he gave ten talents to, five talents to, and one talent to. 
if you have the audacity and the humility to take the talent, I'm holding you accountable to work the talent. If you want to take the talent, work the talent. And he went away. But see, see the comparisons. And the, the servant went away, just like Jesus went away. When he gave him the Holy Ghost, he went away. Then he came back. The one that have ten talents, where you at? Come here. Give an account for what you've done. Well, my Lord, uh, uh, you've given me ten talents. I've taken those ten talents and I've gotten ten other talents. Well done, faithful servant. Well done. Five talents. Come here. Come here, five talent. What do you do? Give an account for what you've done. Well, my Lord, you gave me five. And I went and I doubled that five. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I know it said enter to the joy of the Lord, but well done, my good and faithful servant. In other words, that he was held to accountability. Come here, you to have one talent. What have you done with the talent that I've given you? Well, I know that you're a steer man and you and you reap what you have not sown and you and, and you want to get this when you have not labored there. So I took the one talent that you gave me and I buried it. Oh, how dare you? Now your wicked servant, you done took the Lord's spirit. You done took the Holy Spirit and you buried him. You, you, you quenched him. You wouldn't let him work. You wouldn't let him talk. You wouldn't let him speak. You would not let him come to your Bible study. You wouldn't let him get into the services. You didn't let him break out in the praise. You did not let him do anything. Why? Because you was unlearned in that area. Now you have to carry the title of a wicked. Ah, wicked servant. Took something you wasn't supposed to take. It's not given to lazy people. It's not given to you for to just sit around and not do what you need to be doing with it. I've come that you might be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. That you would advance my kingdom. You're not advancing my kingdom burying what I have given you. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. After, after he suffered a while, after death, if death did not suffering, I don't know suffering. After suffering, he highly exalted him, giving him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven things in earth things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father <laughs> let me read that again he being found fashioned as a man humbled himself obedient to death even to the death of the cross Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, given him a name, which is above every name, and at that name, at that name, at that name, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under earth. Everything is bowing. And that every tongue should confess. Every tongue, not some tongue. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory and honor of God. Every tongue's going to confess that. Wherefore, my beloved, ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own. There it is. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't take it lightly. Don't listen to everything everybody say. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do all that. Don't take all this. You can do it like this. You can do it like that. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 
Work out your salvation. Work out the saving portion of your life with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you. There it is. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. It is his good pleasures. And you thought it was your bright ideas. Oh, I got an idea. I got a plan. I got a plan. I got a plan. And you have not known that it has been, uh, it, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do good and do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Give God glory for the things that are uh, 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 that are happening. You don't understand them, give Him glory. You understand them, give Him, give Him more glory. You've been passed over, give Him glory. Do all things without murmuring and complaining, disputing. That ye may be blameless. There's the reason. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. But what about their daughters? Sons of God. Maturity. Only when you've come to a place of maturity, you'll understand it. The sons of God, without rebuke. Without rebuke. There are some sons who don't need rebuking because they're going to do it God's way. The sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That's who you are. You shines as lights in the world. You shines as lights in the world. You shines as lights in the world. We shines as lights in the world. This is a crooked and perverse nation. We're not going to kick against the pricks. The hand of the Lord is upon our life. We have a job to do. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for how you're doing it. I thank you, Father, that you brought us here for such a time as this. And I pray your, oh God, choice blessings upon these who have been with us throughout the day. Father, I pray that you, you will advance them in the wall. And Father, everyone that this word have come to, Father, the word have come to challenge them where they are and have come to prick their hearts. And as they see the word, Father, help them to begin to divest themselves of themselves. Divest themselves of their hurt. Divest themselves of their past. Divest themselves of that wound, of that petrifying sores. Father, they will begin to divest themselves and surrender and say, Father, here am I. Forgive me of everything that I've done. Have mercy upon me. I don't want to miss out. But I want to embrace your work. I want to embrace what you're doing. I want to do it the right way. Have mercy upon me. Save me, O oh God. Save me from myself. Save me from my fears. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. In Jesus' mighty name. You don't know the Lord as your Savior. This is a very good time right here at this junction that you can accept the Lord as your Savior. How do I do that? How do I accept the Lord as my Savior? First of all, first is the Lord is looking for people that will believe him. Believe him. Simply believe him. If you believe in the Lord, your God. Amen. If you would just accept him as Lord and say, say, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. I believe that you are the Christ. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you made yourself of no reputation and you took on the form of a servant. And you came about, went about doing good, preaching the gospel. Today, I accept this gospel. I accept the plan of Jesus Christ. That your word says, as many as you receive you, to them you give power to become the sons of God. Father, I lift my hand because that's what I want, to become a son of God. Thank you for making me a son of God. I accept, God, that you make me a son of God right now. Thank you for making me a son. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. Thank you for turning my life around. And Father, as a result, I make a vow today to live for you for the rest of my life. Help me to live for you. And your word does declare, he who hath begun a good work in you will shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for turning my life around. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. My time is up and I do have to go. Amen. But I just want to Say God bless you, uh, Pastor Deborah Cooper. Uh -huh. God bless you, 
Catherine Webster. God blessings to you, Stephen Hanks, Bridget Harris. God blessings to you. God blessings to you, Margaret Brown, uh, Overseer Brown. God blessings to you, uh, Nicole. God blessing to all of you, the children of the Most High God. We thank God for you being here with us on today. Go in peace. Amen. And know that God loves you. God loves you. God loves each one of you. In the name of Jesus. Lord's peace. Carry the Lord's peace as you go. Carry the Lord's peace. Have a blessed day, everyone. We love you. Carry the Lord's peace. Goodbye.